because it was a little bit obvious what the uh, what the video was about today. Uh, um, one of the popular videos from last year, um, surface fishing with uh, with frogs uh, for pike. Uh, you get some spectacular hits. Um, so I thought I'd make a, a better go of it this time. Um, again, I'll go through um, some details uh, and try to help you catch a few more fish on the frogs. So here's a, here's a load of choice at the moment. Uh, it's a copper's life target frog. A simple hollow rubber uh, soft bodied frog. Um, and what you've got is you've got two hooks there. Um, and the design of this load is that it's basically it's weedless. Well, virtually weedless it is. And it can be, you can use it um, fished over really, really solid beds of weed, lily pads. Um, where other lures wouldn't work. Your normal lures with two tribbles on them, no chance. Uh, like I said, as a kid, I used to fish with a, um, the popper. That's another small lure, but it's, it's, it, it would okay as long as the weed didn't, it, it didn't hit the surface. If the weed's on the surface, still the poppers get caught in, a, in the weed. So this one allows you to cast over weed, through weed. Uh, you'll see in some of the clips, it's just, it just bounces over. It doesn't, it doesn't hook up. You can see there, I can rub it against my hand and those hooks aren't going in. So, you're not getting tangled up. So something to think about is your, is your choice of setup. Now, um, firstly I'll say that my setup isn't, isn't what would be classed as a, a typical setup for uh, fishing with frogs. Those frogs, I don't even know what they weigh, but they're not, they're not really heavy. I guess 15 gram, I don't even know, but it's, let's say 20 gram. They're not, we're not a massive load. Um, so you don't need a big rod to cast them, you can use them on small rods. So if you've got a, a small rod, let's say up to 30 or 40 gram casting rod, cast these no problem. Um, but what I will say is try and get a rod that's got a, a little bit of backbone to it, so it might be a little stiff rod. Um, most of my rods are not suitable on the smaller range, I've found. So what I'm typically using is my jerkbait rod, and it's not the easiest. Um, if you're going to go out fishing with frogs, you wouldn't be you, most most of you'd struggle to cast a, a, a small frog like this. I mean, on a really heavy setup, it's just totally unbalanced. However, I can use it, so but it but it's not it's not ideal. So I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't tell you to go do it. But try and go as heavy as you can, in my opinion. Try and go as heavy as you can with your rod, so that you can cast it comfortably, work it comfortably. Uh, typically, my frog fishing, it's just a frog chucked in my bag, and I, and I use it whenever, whenever I'm out and I see a little opportunity to, to fish on some weeds. Um, what I will say, even though you use, if you're using a, a, a lighter rod, what I will say is um, still use a, a decent quality braid, a decent strength braid. Let's, uh, I wouldn't go less than 40 pound braid, and obviously a 40 pound trace to go with it. If you go lighter, um, you have to remember that you, you might be fishing this, this low in and around thick heavy weed uh, at the point that you're, you you hook up with the fish the fish goes into that heavy weed and you might have to pull it out so 20 pound 15 pound braid you're just going to break it and you're going to end up with a fish with a load inside it so you want a, a strong braid uh, and together with that you want a, you want a strong trace and like i say 40 pound and for the simple reason uh, a lot of times when you when you set the hooks you might set it a bit harder than you would normally we'll talk about that in a, in a second but, uh, and because you're giving it extra force to set those hooks, um, you need to have a, a bit of strength in your wire trace. Because if you do, you'll get a slight kink in it, and it'll just and it'll just break, or you get a slight twist in it, and you'll just snap it in inside the pike's mouth. Uh, so that's another another thing you don't want. So having by having a bit of extra extra strength, 40 or 50 pound, I'd say at least. Um, so if you can try and find yourself a dedicated setup, uh, I'm I'm a bit cheap. Uh, and I make do with what I've got. Like I said, I make do with my heavy, heavy jerk bit rod. And I can usually cast that as far as I need to. I'm not looking to cast miles. I can cast quite far with it, so I'm happy with that. But um, it might not be, it probably won't be for you. So you can see close up, I'm still fishing with a, uh, my frog, a hundred pound titanium trace, an 80 pound braid. So I know that I've got plenty of strength to get me out of, out of trouble. Uh, it's not ideal, the heavier trace, you'll, and I'll bit, I mean, we'll make it on this video, the heavier trace, that's how it'll sit in the water, so your trace will want to pull the nose of the frog down a little bit, 
However, I don't find it too much of a problem because I keep my frog moving most of the time, so it's not, not a massive problem for me. So it's, it's personal preference, uh, but I would say try and go as heavy as you can rather than lighter than you can. So the frog itself. Some people like to, I know Adi, Adi likes to tie knots in these, tie a knot in the rubber at the end there, and basically it looks like, and you can tie it in the middle as well, and it looks like it knees on a, on a leg basically, so you can do that if you want. Um, I never really bother, Adi likes to, I know it's a little pet hate of his, he's like, oh why haven't you got knots in your, in your frog, it just looks prettier, but I like, I like little pigtails like that I suppose. Um, so when, when you, you'll see from some of the footage, uh, some of the hits are a bit spectacular. Sometimes the pipe just comes up and just totally engulfs it and you've got the, and your frogs inside it. Other times they come up and miss. You'll see on the video, they come past it and just totally miss the low. Sometimes they come up and swirl and you just knock it away. And so what you've got to do is resist, um, resist the temptation to strike on what you've seen. Now that's not easy when you're a low fisherman and sometimes you need to hit it straight away. So you've got to try and teach yourself not to, not to strike straight away. So that'll, that'll help catch you a few more fish. Also what you've got to do is, it's a bit of luck. You don't know what's happened when the pike's got it. The pike's got hold of that low, and what the pike has to do, it has to bite down on that low to expose those hooks. And you need to have them, them hooks exposed so that when you strike, the hooks go in. Now if the pike's just got that inside its mouth, and you pull that, apart from it's just got my finger there, and you pull that, there's a good chance it's not gonna, gonna, gonna set those hooks. It'll just pull straight out of its mouth. So you need that pike to be biting down. So there's a bit of luck there. So let's say, I don't know, 50-50 chance on that it's actually biting down at the point that you need it to um, set the hooks. So you'll hear me talk so many times when I'm low fishing about keeping in contact with a low. You need to have so much contact with your lure when you're jerkbait fishing uh, that you, you know what that lure is. Because it's underwater, you can't see what's happening, you can't always see, and you need to feel that hit. You need to know straight away whether it be a slack line or whether it be a, um, a pike getting it and dragging it out of your arms. However, with, with frogging, um, pretty much forget all that. Uh, learn to forget, learn to forget to strike on what you see. And uh, it doesn't really matter if you've got slack line, it doesn't matter one bit if you've got slack line because you're not, you're not going to be hitting it straight away. Um, what you need to do, teach yourself to resist that urge to strike until you know for definite the pike's, the pike's got hold of it. So what might happen is, you've got a bit of slack line, you've got a bit of slack line, and your pike comes up, takes it, it goes under with a big commotion, and at that point you're wondering, is a frog just gone underwater or has a pike got hold of it? And what you might find is, you'll see your line start to pick up because that pike's got it and it's going away from it. At that point, you know the frog's got hold of it. If you see your line starting to pick up and pulling away, and you can feel it starting to tighten up, just give yourself a little bit of composure and hit it. Don't, don't wait too long because it might, might realise there's something wrong. But what ten, pike tend to do is grab it, take it down, uh, and that's when you can then give it some. Wind, especially if they're going away from you, you can, you can lift your rod and give it some a bit of, a bit of welly and, and set those hooks. Uh, keep, your, keep, your, keep it tight because you need to get those keep those hooks in, keep your line tight um, and don't, don't get frustrated when you miss them. Um, what you'll see even on the footage, you'll see a lot of, you get a lot of action now like I said my PB comes on that a monster of a fish, however you'll catch tiny tiny pike on that and some pike are just too small to even take them, they're that tuned into taking frogs and things so a lot of the times you've got a, a small fish that's grabbed all the low and uh, they're just not big enough to grab hold of it. Uh, I find that the bigger fish, I don't mean monsters, but I mean the, the 10 pound bracket and, and above, they're often easier to hook up just because they don't miss as many times. They've got a bigger mouth, they open it up and it goes inside. Uh, so you give yourself a little bit of composure and then you set the hooks and you tend to find that those ones stick a lot better than the small ones who, who are always bouncing off. And, So the benefit of frogs, um, weedless, and you can fish them in and around uh, really heavy cover, really heavy weed, um, and that's that's what you want to use them for. Uh, pike are going to be laying up in them places, um, chilling out, and, and like I said earlier, the smaller ones, especially the smaller ones, will be hiding in the in the weeds because it, it keeps them safe from the big guys. So uh, targeting around weed, 
uh, and you'll find Pike just laying up there and you, you'll have a lot of fun. Uh, expect a big gale sat there, especially in three or four foot of water, sat on some weed, there'll be a big gale sat there somewhere just soaking up the sun. Um, and use it use it around the cover, target the cover, and like I say you can you can cast these clothes, if you can see that, you can cast it through anything. It doesn't it just doesn't hook up. You just pull it through and it just you imagine, imagine doing that with any other you'd be tangled up. I mean I can chuck it in my net and everything and it's just not gonna get caught. The net's just outside by the way. Um, it's not getting caught in it, all this heavy weed, not not frying to get it in it, it just doesn't they don't get tangled up. Cast it into trees if you if you're not very good at, at casting. Uh, casting into trees, that's what you want to practice with because you can get it back most times, especially if you've got heavier braid as well, you're going to pull it out uh, if they don't, they don't hook up so um, use that use that to your advantage as well um, one, one thing that we, we like to do, if, you, if you're fishing on a small venue let's say you're fishing a small canal or whatever, you can cast it to the far bank, don't cast it to, into the water cast it to the far bank slaps on the mud and then basically what you can do is just nicely just pull it in and just plop it into water and sometimes that plop rather than a big splash that little plop is what attracts a predator it's sort of like a little bit more natural noise uh, some of a frog jumping in it, it attracts their attention so a little tip like that don't just necessarily cast it into the water cast it onto the far bank you won't you won't get tangled you won't get hooked up on the bank cast it onto the far bank and just just pull it slowly in and just drop it in like a canal just drop it in just let it plop into the water uh, As you work it alone, I mean sometimes uh, you'll see, sometimes you'll see in the footage a sort of jerk it and the frogs constantly jumping across the water um, in a skipping motion. You'll see sometimes it's just a straight retrieve and you just pull it in. It's just got a little bit of a V, a little bit of a V bow wave behind it. Nice steady retrieve. Uh, and sometimes that can be a massive difference in whether the fish take it or not. Uh, some days you go and you, and you jerk it through and twitch it through and they just come up. That's what attracts them. Another day that just puts them off for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, you'll see sometimes in my footage. You'll see um, uh, there's times when when I'm, I'm I'm jerking it and nothing happens, and when I switch to a steady retrieve and straight away the same swim, it gets nailed. And is it coincidence? Who knows? But make sure you give it a try. Um, don't forget to pause it. Sometimes on the cast, we like to cast it out, let it hit the water, and let it just sit there. Let it sit there for 10 seconds. Those those rings just vibrate out. Uh, pike. Pike pick those up from uh, from a distance, and they might come exploring. If you're, if you're too quick, uh, bringing it in, uh, that's when you might pull it away from a pike that's come to explore the, the sound. So give yourself a bit of time.